It's Christian with Collision Hub, and it is SEMA 2014, and we are on the trade show floor for a special episode of Repair University. So we've dropped by the car liner booth to talk a little bit about a topic that I've been hearing a lot of you ask questions about, rivets and rivet bonding. You know, for a lot of us, we never thought we would be working on any of the high European vehicles to do this, but Ford dropped that truck bomb on us, and we're kind of starting to think, what is this technology, and how are we going to implement it in our repair, in our repair centers? Larry, thanks. Hey, what's Welcome going on, Welcome to, to uh, Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, back again. Yeah, you know. It's been here a lot of times. <laughs> so I'm getting a lot of questions, and, and quite frankly, even for me, it's a, it's almost a foreign concept of repair to me, to the whole process of riveting. So I thought we'd break down the basics. First of all, what are the rivets, and are there different types of rivets in collision repair? There's a slew of different rivets being either, in the collision repair field, either being aluminum or, or coated steel. Uh, for purposes of different applications. And this all came from aeronautic field yeah. of, um, of airplane building. And then you had the trucking field of, uh, of trailers and tractor trailers, you know, the tractors itself that are put together with uh, rivets and, and, and different types of materials, steel and aluminum, or uh, aluminum and wood, or steel and wood, or even fiberglass is being used. So uh, now we have it in the automotive field, and a lot of the manufacturers are going towards a rivet glue type procedure because of the aluminum and sometimes dissimilar metals, uh, such as the uh, Mercedes Benz. The rear body panel uh, is made up of mostly aluminum attached to steel quarter panels. BMW, a primarily steel manufacturer, has their quarter panels, they want them uh, uh, rivet bonded on even though it's a steel structure. So we're gonna see a bunch of these different types of rivets, and each manufacturer is gonna call out uh, a different type of rivet for different areas. For example, this looks like one of your regular monobolt, yeah. henrob type rivets and stuff like that. And this particular rivet is a structural rivet. When it gets crushed, it actually forms a collar. And this is used, uh, this particular one's used with Mercedes Benz, and this is for where the resistance welding arms can't reach and, and you can't get access to both sides, so they don't want you to do any mag, mag plug welds on there, so they're gonna make you put in a rivet in that area on a, on a steel vehicle. And these would be more of a gold color for that particular uh, okay. application. These silver ones here are more for an application of steel aluminum uh, in that case. This happens to be a steel uh, uh, rivet. And what'll happen is, is that you'll, you'll, get the, uh, you'll get the glue between the two flanges. Obviously, it'll be a hole, and you'll put your rivet in there and compress the rivet. But in areas where you can reach both sides of the flange, you're going to see a couple of these different type size rivets here, and they're different oh, wow. heights. And what'll happen is these are called SPR, self-piercing rivets. Wow. You'll drop it in, and the outside of it will look like a regular rivet when it gets crushed in. But the back side will give you a different formation here, which would be more in this fashion. Well, you'll see the back side of this, see this dimpled area? Yeah. Okay, that's not the rivet. That's the impression this rivet's making once it gets in there. So what'll happen is this rivet will crush outward and this hole will get much bigger and flatter and fill in this hole and cause this to, uh, um, cause this to a dimpling area here with this area around the outside that's raised up, that's grabbing around the outside of the rivet. And that makes for a very strong uh, um, attachment method. It's really tight right there. Well, yeah, <laughs> no, normally you would have glue in here, but because yeah. the trade show doesn't allow yeah. glue or adhesives in the area, we're not gonna have that right now. So how do we put these in? Well, there's gonna be a couple of different applications of tools. Now, obviously, most of these manufacturers are going to come out with, you wanna grab onto that for a second? Yeah. It's oh, kind of heavy. <laughs> it weighs a little bit. Much like your resistance welders, you're going to have different uh, throats, mouths, or opening areas right. to be able to get around different areas on these different applications. But for purposes of this video, let me hold something a little smaller. This is the, one of the Carolina models, and uh, this is actually air operated. This one here is from Reliable Automotive Equipment. This is the Express 800, and it, it's somewhat similar. This one's actually set up for doing blind ribbons but they do have an interchangeable head. I'll show you afterwards that goes on. And you can see it's similar. And both of these work off of uh, pneumatic air pressure. Then we have the Henrob model that Dan from Henrob was nice enough to loan us for a few minutes, where this one here is also can be utilized, but it's battery operated. Nice. So you could have a battery backup sitting off to the side. You can start doing your rivets and stuff, and obviously the head rotates around. This particular one, because of the point, is set up to take these rivets out much in this fashion. So you would get this lined up where you would take one of these dimples and you line it up on there and you squeeze the gun in this fashion. And then once it gets to the point, it backs away. 
and my ribbons fell out. Yep. So what you wind up with, remember I told you the rivet presses outward, so this is what the rivet looks like after we removed it. And this is what the rivet looked like before you put it in. You can see the differences there. Oh, wow. So much fat of the rivet got because when it gets compressed in there, it gets forced outward. And the metal gets forced inside that, that whole area there, and that's what makes it lock in. So it doesn't go all the way through both pieces of metal. It goes through one and into the second one. Right. So when replacing it, you'd have to drill a hole on the outside, but the inside piece, you don't have a hole. So it would slide through the first hole, then it would be pressed into the second hole but uh, through the second piece of metal, not creating a hole, but then creating this flanged, locked-in area. Yeah. So it works out pretty nicely that way. So what are some of the benefits? You know, now that four is going to rivet bonding, and it, what are some of the benefits of it? Is it better than welding? Is it stronger? Is it, is it less technician era because we're not welding by doing this? Well, what happens is, what makes it nice is that uh, there's less technician era because of the welding, there's less problems with heat effect zone. So now you have a rivet gun that'll, a, a, a compression or, or pneumatic type gun that will go ahead and press in the rivets for you. And it, it's a cleaner job, it's a faster job. And you don't need as much skill to put in rivets as you do with welding. Welding aluminum can be very, very difficult. Yeah. And you have to really understand a lot of parameters. Uh, the heat, uh, the temperature in the shop, the ambient heat, the temperature of the uh, vehicle that you're welding on, uh, your gun angle, the stick out of the, um, of the electro wire, uh, gun angle that the technician's going to use, how fast the technician moves or how slow the technician moves will all affect aluminum welding versus steel mag welding, which can be a little bit easier if taught properly. Uh, aluminum uh, MIG welding can be a little bit more difficult. So to eliminate some of the technician error and make a cleaner job in essence, they're utilizing rivets. And these different type rivets can all come in handy uh, when putting something together. So now you can get a, an a, a tech that will go ahead and, and set up a panel and then have a B tech that can come in and finish it off. Because I can say to the B tech, okay, so these rivets here, you're gonna push these through that hole that I made and you're gonna go around and squeeze this in. When you're done with that, I want you to take this, this particular tool here, we can interchange. I want you to take this head off. You're going to interchange and put this head on there. So now I want you to take your rivets and all the holes I drilled completely through, I want you to compression these in. And the technician can go ahead and keep going through as he goes along. Much like with resistance welding. If you have a resistance welder, much like the Carolina machines that's sitting over here, the CTR 12000, I can weld in a couple of spots, put a magic marker mark, and then let a technician come over and say, here, just squeeze the trigger because it's an auto load. In this case, I could just easily tell you, Kristen, all the holes I drilled, I just need you to take this rivet, put it like this, make sure it sits flush up against the metal, squeeze the trigger, you're done. The rivet will fall inside of here, put another rivet in, and go on. So now you can have a B-Tech take care of it. In this case, I gotta have you come over and do it for so me. So what you're saying is I might have a job back in the shop one yes, day. Yes, you can. You can come back to the <laughs> shop with me and, and hang out and work if you'd like. Uh, I'm applying for Rivet Girl. That's gonna uh, be rivet my girl. next job. Now, in some cases, you'll have some of these rivets uh, will be steel or a high strength steel. In the case of Mercedes Benz, for example, on the 221 or the 222 uh, models, which is the S Class, they're utilizing um, use of boron on their side structure along with boron alloyed steel uh, uh, self-piercing rivets. So how do I drill through it? It's bore on alloyed steel. So you'd need one of these two different size drill bits. Wow. Yeah. And one of these two size bits would be utilized to drill out this head because you can't get access to the backside from the manufacturer. So what you would use in that <coughs> case is there's a, there's a drill like this that actually has a travel stop on it that you can get on areas to be able to drill them out. And there's another configuration that fits across for flanges where you can't reach behind it so that you don't break the, the tip. Because these wow. are good for about 60 to 80 welds and you have to grease them each time. If you don't put grease on these, <coughs> you're gonna have trouble uh, one drilling two with the longevity of the, of the bit. These bits don't last a long time and they cannot be resharpened. And you gotta be careful, if you twist in any which way or form, you break one of the flutes off, it's garbage. Wow. So that can be a problem there. It sounds like there's a lot to consider. Well, the, we know that you got a lot more questions about rivet, rivet bonding and the processes that are gonna be in the collision center. We're gonna step away from talking about the tools and the rivets and get into the actual procedure and process and show you what it looks like on a couple of the samples that are here on the SEMA show floor. So stay tuned to Repair University. We're gonna bring you a little bit more education on rivets.